So we've been looking a lot at reactions, our different types of reactions. Now we can start to write net ionics for our ionic type reactions. Uh, next up is to look at our special class of reactions that are classified as acid or base reactions. And we see these a lot. Uh, we use a lot of acids because of their corrosive and re reactive nature. And so it's good to be able to identify these and to think about what this means for us, because I would argue that this is one we could probably find in your house. Uh, some of you might even have it on your backpack if you got some soda or some apple juice or citric juice. So anyway, uh, looking at our acid-base reactions, we're looking at how we start to interact on our daily basis. And so in your house, We've got a scale for actually thinking about how reactive an acid or a base is. We say that pure water has a pH of seven. You've probably heard of the pH scale. pH of seven is neutral, neither acidic nor basic. If we are less than seven on the pH scale, we consider that to be an acid. And we see acids in our house. Uh, so we think of things like your drinking water or your different types of juices have citric acid in them, lemon juice, your stomach acid, vinegar. These are all acidic natures and they have a pH less than seven on the pH scale. If you have a pH greater than seven, you're said to be alkaline or basic. You have a base uh, substance. And so usually these are your cleaning products, things like baking soda, uh, ammonia, bleach. These are your strong cleaning substances. These bases react with usually the fatty acids, the greases, the oils that build up over time that are non-water soluble, but more on that to come. So we interact with these all the time. Um, there's different severities or reactivities for all of these. And it's worth being able to recognize that we see these a lot as we look at our daily life. By definition, a neutralization reaction is kind of the big type of reaction that we have. If we say we neutralize, we have removed the acidic or basic substance and turned it into a water and a salt. And so a neutralization reaction occurs when an acid is reacting with a base. And this is how we clean up in the lab. If you spill an acid, you get a base. If you spill a base, you get an acid that will neutralize the reactive particles and let us clean it up safely. By definition, and this is actually the Arrhenius definition, don't worry about that, but by definition, an acid is any substance that can give off an H plus, or we sometimes say a proton in solution when dissolved in water. And so it's a proton donor, it gives away an H plus. And this makes sense. When we did all of our nomenclature things, we said anything that starts with a hydrogen, we're gonna consider an acid because it could give it away into the solution. A base is a substance that produces hydroxide ions when dissolved in water. It gives off an OH minus. So we're looking at things like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. We've seen these in the labs as well. Uh, the other definition that we sometimes hear for our base is it is the proton acceptor because sometimes we have things that can either give an H plus or donate a proton, but then other things that accept the proton that aren't a hydroxide that don't really have this OH. And so sometimes we have this other definition. And so the proton donor and acceptor is another way we can think about our acid and base description. But it turns out not all acids are created equal. Some acids are more reactive than others. And the way we define or think about an acid strength is based upon its reactivity. And we kind of group them into two groups. It's either a strong acid, it reacts very vigorously. It is a strong reaction. That's a strong acid or base. We say dissociates completely into its resulting ions. It breaks apart 100% of the time. You put for example, hydrochloric acid. You put hydrochloric acid into water, it splits apart completely. Every single particle splits apart into H plus and Cl minus. Because all the H pluses are free, they're dissociated, they react strongly. They can all go out and react with things in a fashion that is befitting our acids, corroding or whatever it may be. A weak acid or base does not dissociate well. Its bond is strong. So things like hydrofluoric acid. You put hydrofluoric acid into water, and it stays mostly stuck together. It does not dissociate very much. And as a result, it reacts poorly or less because it's still stuck in its original kind of covalent bond. And so because the molecules intact, we consider it a weak acid or base. And I wish there was a better way to remember. I can kind of give you some tips and some hints here, but really there's a list of strong ones. These are the ones that react a lot. We got to watch out for them. Um, we want to get something done. We're, we're using these strong acids and strong bases. And, and you're just going to need to know them. 
I know it's not fun, but you just gotta, you gotta know these ones because we're gonna see them in the lab. We're gonna see them in reactions. We need to know whether it's strong or weak, not only because of the reaction, but also because of how we write the net ionic, more on that to come. So there are seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, good, good, good. There are seven strong acids that we need to be familiar with. We've got the, what we call the halide acids, including hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic. Those are all strong, they dissociate completely. And we've got our oxo acids that are strong acids, our nitric, sulfuric, perchloric, and chloric acids. These are the big seven to be on the lookout for. Any other acid, if you have any other acid that's not on this list of seven, we consider it to be weak. So for example, acetic acid, that's vinegar, HC2H3O2. That's weak, it does not dissociate well. That's why we can drink it. If you are a fan of pickle juice, because it is held together tightly with its original ions, it does not dissociate, it reacts weakly. And so all the others, including hydrofluoric acid, are considered weak acids. Your bases, bases are all the hydroxide, not all of them, but the big ones. Sodium, potassium, lithium, rubidium, cesium, calcium, strontium, and barium are all considered strong bases. These dissociate 100%, all of the hydroxides are free to react, they are highly reactive species. We consider them strong bases. Any other bases are considered weak. And so if we know the strong ones, if it's not on our list of strong, we consider it weak. Uh, and so in terms of tips or tricks to kind of remember this, if you're more of a visual learner, we can kind of think about, so let me switch my screen share here, that one. If we're thinking about our strong and our weak on the periodic table, our strong acids include those kind of couple of, uh, oxo acids, and then it includes these three acids, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic. For our strong bases, it's actually even clearer. A strong base is anything in group one, any of these hydroxides, and then our castor bear, calcium, strontium, and barium. If you've got a hydroxide with any of those, we consider that to be a strong base. You can kind of use the periodic table to help you out. There's just a couple of them that you got to be able to recognize beyond that. Um, just keep in mind, hydrofluoric is weak. The ones underneath would then be strong. Uh, cool. And so we have actually another way we can decide or test to see if it's strong or weak. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here we've got actually four different substances and we can actually test to see how reactive or how strong or weak our substances might be. And the way we can test for this is what we would call a conductivity test. In our first one here, I've got one molar hydrochloric acid. So we've got HCl in the first one. And so hopefully you're recognizing, wait, HCl, I hear that one a lot. We use that one a lot, and that's because it is very much reactive. I'm going to go ahead and submerge my conductivity probe into the solution. And if it is a strong acid, if it is something that reacts very, very strongly, uh, we should see a light bulb go up. Whoa, okay, yep. <laughs> because it is a strong species, it dissociates completely as a result it conducts electricity very, very well. Right next door here in our second beaker, we've actually got our high brand, brand, not a sponsor, uh, acetic acid. So this is white distilled vinegar. Uh, active in par particle or ingredient in vinegar is acetic acid. Not on our list of strong acids. As a result, it conducts very, very poorly. It is a weak acid. And I don't know if you can see it quite there. It's trying to light up. We get just the faintest of a bulb because our bonds are strong, the acid is weak, the particles do not dissociate, making it less reactive. As we start to look at our bases, here we've got one molar sodium hydroxide in our next beaker over. This one, sodium hydroxide in group one is a strong base, hallelujah, hallelujah. Strong base, it dissociates 100%. Hallelujah. Therefore, conducts electricity very, very well. Our last one here is our ammonium hydroxide, not on our list of strong bases. As a result, our ammonium hydroxide lights up just a little bit. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can get it to go. Just ever so faint a light on our little tiny filament bulb for our weak base. Cool, hopefully this makes sense. We're starting to think of our strong and our weak bases. Strong and weak acids, the stronger, the more it breaks apart in solution.